it's just like an extension to yourself. Like I never see AI as the as the art director. You're still the art director, and and AI is merely like your intern, and and that's how you have to use it, right? Like, if, yeah, the the advice would really just be like to not be afraid and trying it out. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Like I also at some point tried myself in 3D and I was so bad at it. And I was just like, oh my God, it's just like not for me. All right. Today we had a pleasurable conversation with Julie W Design. If you are from the AI bubble, you probably know her work. Uh, she is very active on Twitter. Uh, I'm a huge fan of her work. I'm a street photographer and I see she's a drastically inspired by street photography. And we also spoke about how her work stands out a bit. There are people like creating a lot of sci-fi and she focuses on like realism, on the routine, on the beauty of the daily life. So it was really interesting conversation. Uh, what are your thoughts about this conversation, uh, Mauricio? Hello, oh, yeah, it was super pleasant. Like her mindset around AI and, and like even mental health and this kind of things by itself is inspiring and her passion for color and how to experiment in like Photoshop and, and, and learn new things through AI. I think it's, it was a really nice inspiring conversation and she's a super good vibes person. So I hope you all enjoy. All right, so let's cut the blah, blah, blah and go to the episode. See you. All right, uh, welcome to one more episode of Zero One Cast, a place where humans create and machines dream. Today we have here with us uh, Julie W Design. She is a very known uh, figure on if you're on the Twitter bubble or even also on LinkedIn. Uh, she's kind of influencer, I would say. Uh, always sharing a lot of nice, good, uh, good quality content. And yeah, we want to talk more about her projects, about AI creativity, and some other topics. So yeah, my name is Odair. I have with me here my co-host Mauricio. So uh, Julie, would you mind give like a short intro about yourself or people who are not from the bubble and maybe doesn't know you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Julie. I am a graphic designer and visual artist. And um, yeah, I started my whole career kind of on the internet and we're still here, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, now dabbling more into the visual narratives, whereas I was more into the graphic design and UX, UI kind of direction before. Um, but yeah, it's a ton of fun. I absolutely love dabbling kind of back into the more photographic style and cinematic um, area. And yeah, I think that's about it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So I want to start with the question which I asked like all the previous guests so far. So before we talk about AI, let's talk about Julie before AI. So how, how was your work like your work routine in your creative process before AI? And how did it change it after AI, which basically is how AI is changing your life? Yeah, I, I think it was very standard, classic graphic designer ish <laughs> so yeah i mean before starting my projects with clients um usually if there's like a mood board involved for example i i had like the usual sites where you just go to like pinterest google wherever to find like the moods that you need to put into the mood board and everything um and yeah i mean even before i was a freelancer same thing even if you have like packaging design to do or anything like you always look around find your resources find your inspiration for the campaign or whatever you actually want to work on and yeah I mean always loved it we still love it but now it's gotten a lot faster <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. and um, I think like having that kind of knowledge as to what you're looking for also helps with in AI to create what you want to see basically like you you don't have to rely on yeah basically the sources outside of 
AI anymore or as much anymore. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, did it like <clears throat> really changed your creative process or, or not much? It, it changed quite a bit. Like I, I feel like I'm way more creative now than I was before because I am not as reliant on other works as much anymore. Like I, as creative people, you usually have a visual in mind and having to search for that image is like tedious. It's like it, it takes forever and then sometimes it doesn't even exist. And now with AI, it's gotten so much quicker. If you know how to talk to the machines, then it's pretty easy to get to yeah like from a to z like it's it changed completely how how quickly i can move around and in our society <laughs> like everything is uh, asap and yeah I, I mean it has good sides and bad sides like sometimes it's cool to take your time sit with it find your creative inspiration but on the other hand it's obviously very cool to be able to have a quick turnaround and move really fast and yeah get and in general I, do you think this is good for the industry do you know there's people are really like worried about also the speed of things and everything do you think this like ai is good for design in general in my opinion it isn't as bad as it would be to look on pinterest like it's the same kind of, yeah, I, I, I guess for a mood board, for example, it, it would be the same kind of thing. Like it wouldn't be more or less bad for the process. In terms of how quickly you could get there, I don't know. Like it's really hard to say because I, I know the traditional way and I don't know how it would be to grow up with AI now, being 15 again, trying to find my own fame. I don't know how easy it could be if I just stumbled into AI directly. So I don't know. I, in, in general, I would say from my perspective, it's not a bad thing. But for in the general, I don't know. It, it would probably need a bit more time to see how, how it affects really like the creative industry in, in general. If like younger people are now discouraged by it maybe because a machine can be so creative. I don't know. Why else? That's a good point thinking about people maybe who are thinking about start a photography career or a design career, or even like 3D career, whatever. Yeah. And just uh, about the old ways, uh, just some funny story. When I used to work with editorial design a bit with like uh, educational books. So usually the, the, the writer would like write this chapter along six pages or something, eight pages. And there they will come this iconography research. So the editor would say, hey, hey, here I need a photography of like a Brazilian woman, middle age. So there was all the description, uh, here I need a family of like with these characteristics. And then we used to send this package to this like iconogra iconographic agencies and they will do all this shutterstock research and they will come back to us, hey, I have three, four options for it. And like hours of my day was like selecting these. Okay, that's a yeah. good one. No, not this one. Or and sometimes even it was like almost impossible to find specific image you need for that chapter. Then sometimes you even need to change the, the writing to accommodate that. And I, I also think a lot about this a bit like, you know, like stock photos, stock videos, like yeah. change. So it's changing, will change in it so, so quickly, right? Yeah, it, it, it for sure will have good sides and bad sides. Like I, I can totally also see the, the bad side of it. Like everything's going to be even quicker and we already have like that kind of fast food fast design mentality um integrated and it might not be helping with it um but on the other hand i mean i'm happy if i can work faster with visuals that are very on point for what i need um and in that case like yeah more time more clients more money so <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> exactly. I, I think it's, it's a really nice take not to, to look at bad sides, but in the end, it's like how we will use the thing that would di dictate, right? So, I, I, and I don't think we'll die like 3D photography or anything. 
it's just still be no. there it's just will be competing uh, with another thing which is ai but sure will be a lot of people being graduated from this and, and getting jobs and stuff like that but who knows maybe in 10 yeah. years the economy is completely different it's not more capitalism yeah. or whatever and who knows um but but i love to think back and and be like when i was a teenager and when i started finding i don't know my creative voice <laughs> like i didn't like digital photography and that was obviously around right like 15 years ago that we all had digital cameras and the phone started to have cameras and everything but what i went for was definitely like more analog and mm -hmm. i love music that was old and and <laughs> like i was more inspired by the stuff that wasn't as in the now so i don't think ever that photography or anything would go away with it it's just like how you approach it and mm -hmm. that for sure depends on the people who will work with it right like some people will dabble directly into ai and be super creative and others will go the traditional way and start with photography and then maybe see like okay well yeah in photoshop there's generative fill that's pretty handy. <laughs> and I see myself like using it more than I expected, to be honest. And oh yeah. I oh joke that God. is like the like is the generic feel is like the client used to think that Photoshop was 10, 20 years ago. Like filter, remove this chair. You know, like yeah. <laughs> filter, change the woman <laughs> to the front. <laughs> yeah. The Photoshop finally made our dreams come true. Like <laughs> the magic button. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I love that you have uh, AI NFT series launched. It's almost a year now, right? And for the time that was done, like the quality of the images is quite impressive. So I would like you to talk a little bit about like what motivates you to, to launch the series, how was the process a little bit and how you could achieve like such a nice quality and mood on the images with like, I think it was version four, no five already. Um... Good question. I think it was still version <laughs> four, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think version five came out like in, or no, I think it came out w w when I was working on it. So summer is still like version four and summer five. Okay. But uh, most okay. of them are v version four um, because otherwise the style was a bit too, too upgraded <laughs> versus the other ones. And I didn't <laughs> want to start from the beginning. Yeah. Oh my God, mm -hmm. that does sound long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, In the AI landscape is ages. Oh my God, yeah. Every week is a year. Um, yeah, like um, I worked on the NFT series with Fellowship and they approached me and they did like a, a group um, exhibition collection with uh, various post photography post photographers <laughs> cinematographers whatever it's called um and yeah each one of us had a series of 100 images and yeah I, I really wanted to double into kind of storytelling so I went for yeah sort of a storytelling that I think yeah I split them up into five and had like 20 images in each kind of color direction five stages of grief um and yeah it, it was amazing to to work on it and to just like kind of <laughs> i don't know it was at that time it felt really like therapy and and just giving i don't know getting some stuff out of out of mind and and using that that energy kind of for creative um, purpose. And yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, like the, the quality when I now look at them, it's so hard because I know I could do them better now. <laughs> That's normal. But still, I, I still kind of like them. And I did a ton of Photoshop retouching on them because like that was still kind of the time where six or seven fingers were pretty usual <laughs> and there were a ton of artifacts and we didn't have magnific back then so yeah it it was sometimes a challenge to be like okay well this image is really cool mood wise but 
Oh my god, there's so much AI art. So much ha in happening there. here. Yeah, it, like I just can't use it because I really love to push the, the realism of it. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I absolutely love when people just embrace the AI artifacts in them. But yeah, for me, it's always like I, I, I take it as a challenge and I want to see how far I can push it to make it like the most realistic looking image kind of but yeah it, yeah it does involve a lot of photoshop and it still does like i still use a ton of photoshop <laughs> but that's just because i yeah. love it <laughs> so and in photography you'll be doing the same yeah and exactly in 3D, you'll be doing the same like so yeah it's, it's part of the process i think right yeah so, yeah absolutely willing to go the, the extra mile and, and and add that extra detail that just make it shine yeah. <laughs> at least for me you know especially color yeah, editing right, right. like color correction and everything that's like my oh my god just setting up all the, yeah. the artboards in photoshop and then having to see like okay how can i tweak it with everything i have <laughs> and then seeing how it all comes together and tells like one story like that's that's a cool thing to do I yeah that's a pretty amazing process uh so you are about to launch with Maven the crafting visual narratives with AI. It's been it's been on my roadmap <laughs> for for a while. It's it's so wild because like I think I started the process of the course in August, and then I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, my journey has talked about like version six for a while. Let's wait. <laughs> and then I was then you like, wait oh, for yeah. next one then you wait for <laughs> yeah and and it's it's crazy also whenever i i try to um do a presentation or courses like live courses like i always always have to like an hour before the presentation i always have to go back in and <laughs> change a few things because there's always a better a new version and new tools coming in so yeah, I, I'm still kind of working on it, um, but mm -hmm. I can't promise any <laughs> date when it's actually going to launch. And yeah, it's bad. I should really get just going and just tackle it. <laughs> Maybe you make it feel better, but my course with awards in AI took nine months to get ready, literally. Yeah. With four AI, it's like three yeah. years. So. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So yeah, it's part of the process, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, again, change so fast that if you write a book about AI, if you make a course about AI, I think in three months, it's already one month, it's outdated depending on what you're doing. Gee, totally. So it's like real yeah, time I... and it's just, it's crazy, right? It's, uh, it's like, I think, I think it's even faster than crypto, you know, like the Web3, like so many new, so many products and things and everything's new uh yeah they have a bit, a bit more of the same but they also have like like magnific for example something new that just pop up that then becomes just part of everyone's workflow 11 labs and everything yeah. uh like yeah. for example the 11 lab sound effects i use in i made a short uh, film just also wanted to try the, the beta and it was really nice like just like kind of like prompting the sound effects instead of like going to this website and like looking for it so okay this will become part of my tool set yeah. for sure because this is faster i like, have three, four websites where I check for like sound effects, for example. Yeah. And I would like to talk to you a bit about street photography. Um, so I'm street photography myself. I've been like shooting on streets for around like 10 years now. Uh, I also, I self published some book on Amazon because I wanted to see my work printed, but I'm also always like printing photos or giving to friends. I like to, to print. But yeah, That's for me, it. it's like this feeling of going outside uh, with the camera and I, and I see your AI work. Yeah, so for me, it's a very mindful process too. When I'm really on the mood for it, just take the camera or put some music and I just wander around the streets without like any destination or any goal. And for me, at least it's very fun because sometimes the scenes, they pop up to me like, hey, I'm a photo. Hey, there's a photo here. And sometimes I go out just like nothing. Everything is like crap. I don't see anything <laughs> and I see it's really like the, it really depends on my mood and everything but I see your work uh, I follow your work on on Twitter yeah I don't want to call it X it's to call Twitter um, <laughs> I follow I think as a whole community <laughs> like just yeah talk. it was even the name of a <laughs> verb and a button but yeah it's yeah. another conversation <laughs> how to run a branding in three steps but uh, 
I see your, your timeline on Twitter like very inspiring about street photography. At least for me, the vibes, the scenes, or the I think street photography also have this thing about the mundane and the you know the 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 yeah, the, the routine and everything. And I think with street photo, you can kind of enlarge and make this like routine something much bigger. And I see a lot of this on your on your work. So I would like to ask, like, uh, are you, do you do street photography as well with a camera or something? And uh, how much does this inspire you? Or maybe you have any, some street photographer you like, you would like to, to mention. What's your relationship with street photography? And how do you use this on your AI work? I think I've never done, like, in, in, in that kind of sense, street photography. But I used to be, like, very into photography like I actually wanted to become more of a photographer than actually a graphic designer but then I found the joy in editing the photos and that's where everything shifted and I was just like okay well this is the fun part like I love taking the photos but editing them later and just seeing how I create can create like a, a story around that photo like that's what really kind of caught me and and kind of stuck with me so i i didn't do street photography in that kind of sense but i used to go out and then just shoot some stuff and take those images to later edit them because i i mean at that point i i didn't want to buy stock material to to work with and yeah and then at some point life happens and you're just a graphic designer stuck with your computer for 20 hours a day and you don't go outside anymore. <laughs> and then there's a pandemic that makes it even worse. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, just like the editing part is what always excites me the most kind of in working with it, but also kind of the, yeah, as, as you mentioned, like the mundanity and stuff, like I love when stuff is like kind of boring, but you know. aesthetic. And I feel like with AI, most people kind of think of it like as a as a future, like very futuristic stuff, very sci-fi and everything. For me, I I love to dabble into the into like the nostalgic, very melancholic, like the past, like the stuff that I I wasn't around. <laughs> like That's obviously, yeah. it's everything in AI, and I can't be there and go back and everything. But that's kind of what gives me the most joy, and then. It's, I think the process is kind of still the same. Like for me, it's like instead of going out and, and taking the photos, it's like just trying stuff out in mid journey. Like sometimes I, like my prompts sometimes make total sense and sometimes it's just like total crap. You and, made and, the photo inside and, your head now instead of going, making it inside the camera, right? So exactly, once one step, yeah. uh, you cut one step because. At least when I'm walking, I see the photo. I say, okay, yeah. I will crop here. It will be black and white. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's just like having a prom kind of do that. And then sometimes I, yeah, like with the parameter weird in mid journey, like that's my favorite thing to explore because it really gives you that analog kind of nomographic touch to it. And then it just brings me back in time when I'm like, like, and but there is also the typing mistakes, right? I think recently you shared something that you're supposed to with something and was a doggy, I think, or something like that, and it was like, yeah. <laughs> do you have any? Yeah, I, I think I wanted a foggy, a foggy night drive, and it was a doggy night drive, and I was like, <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing! Like, absolutely loved it. Like for the whole night, I was just like generating <laughs> little dogs in in various scenes, and I was like, oh my god, this makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, just like it's so random, but. Yeah, I, I kind of treat it the same same way, but yeah, I can also see how people find that weird and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I used to just scroll TikTok and Instagram and now I'm just like generating all the time. And mm -hmm. I don't well, know, for better, me, I, I really healthy, love it. <laughs> like I, I feel very creative doing it and I don't feel as brain dead when I prompt, whereas when I just like <laughs> scroll TikTok. So for me, it's a win-win there. <laughs> it's funny how one, one letter can make totally difference of mid journey, like from foggy to doggy. It's like one letter, yeah. you would change completely your image. Oh, it was yeah. a beautiful mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. And, but 
when you were talking, I was also thinking that, uh, as you said, like, you know, the, you see the AI, a lot of sci-fi or surrealistic, all this crazy shit, which is hard to build in a normal way is like do this like collage or, you know, so a lot yeah. of people think go this, and your feed and your work is like real, real, like more photography. So I think maybe this also stands, you know, among the, the timeline and everything, because yeah, people are more creating sci-fi, crazy stuff. You're really like focusing on the real and the photography, right? Kind of highlights, yeah. I think in some way. By the way, I don't know if you know Vivian. Do you know Vivian Meyer? It's one of my favorite street photographers. I also put the book here because I wanted to. I really rec recommend for everyone. Uh, I the don't think so, Vivian but Meyer. I will look it up. Yeah, there's some documentary about her online as well. But I think you will. I think you will like her work because it's really like. Oh yeah. Close to the, what you what you're doing. But I yeah. really recommend. And, uh, oh my god! Yeah, totally. Got to a quick story about her. <laughs> so she she was like a, like this common normal person. She was like a babysitter for like many years, uh, working in houses, and she was shooting all the time, every weekend, almost every day, but never showing anybody. And then when she died, someone took all these like negatives and threw it on the street. So it was like boxes and boxes of negative. And some teenage guy, he looked like, oh, this is like looks cool photo. I will take and. Mm. We'll talk to the museum, maybe like they will like. And then he brought to the museum and this guy's like, this is like amazing piece of work. So she was discovered after that. And there, yeah, there's some documentaries oh about this story, which is really, really interesting. <laughs> see, that's why I share my stuff on, on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> I don't want anybody to see my 60,000 mid-journey generations. Yeah. But we'll be the equivalent <laughs> of the pho photographer's <laughs> negatives, right? Is our mid-journey. Yeah. I mean, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, some stuff is better where it, where I, it is. I some heard some that when maybe. you die, they on the on the heaven they ask for your, your incognito browsing history, and then depending <laughs> oh, on what's no. there, they, they will judge if you enter or not. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, AI filmmaking. Uh, so you, you, I see you doing more AI photography, but I also I know that you do filmmaking. We have two of your films on the zero one cine. Uh, the first like trailer you did, uh, which for me kind of has some Donnie Darko vibe in some way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was also now the Gen, Gen 48 for uh, this like also about the racer and all the conflicts and his life, uh, which I really, I really like. And I remember me a lot of Ayrton Senna, which is the Brazilian pilot when I was seeing also the helmet and, and the car. So uh, what, what's your relationship with like AI filmmaking? Uh, how, how often you're doing? Are you like working some new film? What's your what's happening there? So yeah, I, I mean, film was never on my roadmap ever, and it really was only because of AI that I got a taste for it. Like I never touched After Effects, I never touched Premiere Pro. I was always kind of, I, I mean, I also didn't have like any material to work with, and I was like, how how would I start? And also already being a graphic designer you wear so many hats and I was like okay I, I don't want to also do video editing because once people know that about you <laughs> you're gonna be also the video editor for everything and yeah I, I yeah I never really touched that kind of field in in my creative um, journey so far but yeah what I don't know I mean I always do kind of like the movie stills, trying to um, tell a story, do a bit more storytelling. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, your I already with, have the generation. Your so. work with Mid Journey is very cinematic, right? Like still, yeah. stills and the... And then having like Runway and Pika as an option, I was like, I mean, I'm going to try it out. Let's see what, see what happens. <laughs> what it can do. <laughs> and it's so mesmerizing to see just like your images moving Coming and to informing life in some that way. yeah telling that story like kind of even more realistically like that's i don't know it still fascinates me every time i upload an image and then it just moves and i'm like <laughs> how and yeah. wow that's i don't know i think it still amazes me more than just like having the generations um but yeah currently not really working on anything new ish but it's still always dabbling around. Like, I constantly take my images and go to runway. And then I, I wish I had more time right now and then still 
be able to get more out there but life happens and along those <laughs> ways there's like challenges and now it's more like again um sharing the images but yeah like in the background there's still a lot of video going on but i don't share as much because i don't know like with with films i'm even more picky because it, everything has to sit there we like, are, we are picky really... on zero one scene it too <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, I really want the sound and everything to, to match. And that takes a lot of time. And I mean, yeah. now we have like a bit more options, I guess, like with Suno and... No, is Suno, it Suno? Suno got yeah. like better, yeah. like crazy fast. I remember prompting three, four months ago. It was like, eh. And now it's like, it was like, what the fuck? It's like, like Yeah, I tried jump. it again like last week and I was like... Big jump. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this is, this is pretty good. This is not sucking anymore. Like it's getting like dangerous. Yeah. And also we like the lip syncing and everything. Like I have so many ideas, but then again, like there's always, I'm always short time. in time and I'm just like, oh my God, I wish I could just like take a vacation of two weeks <laughs> from everything. Just be like, sorry, I'm sick guys. <laughs> like, I can't. And just work on a project again. But yeah, it's, yeah. There's no, so me, many I, options I now. I need to match my AI life with my full-time job. And I feel that 24 hours not being enough anymore, you know, for the project, for <laughs> podcast and everything. Uh, I need a day with like 32, 36. It will be okay. I think we'll match. Like, uh, it's, yeah. it's, but this, I really see, yeah, this AI is like another time, another time. It's like a distortion on the, the warping on the time and space, like, yeah. which makes things like closer and faster. And yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it really, but it's so cool. Like, I, I love how creative you can get with it. And then the tools constantly update stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, Runway and Pika Labs, they now have lip sync and then getting to uh, do the sound effects matching to your video. Like, that's insane. That's just crazy. And it's so amazing to see all the people working with it and being like, really creative with it and I don't know I just love to see it <laughs> so like with all these tools and things around I think it's important to focus on something personal something that you like well, what do you say would be your main inspirations in terms of artists like photographers cinematographers and all what do you think are the ones that most influentiate you in your work uh, it, it's always so hard to to pick one or two like I don't know I'm, I'm really like I went to art school and we really treated a ton of artists back then in art history. And all of those artists are kind of like have inspired me in some ways. Like, I don't know, even Marina Abramovich or uh, Cindy Sherman, all those people, they, like they somehow made their way into my head and, and doing something and I don't have like one I could pick and but yeah also just like cinematographers like Wes Anderson like I love his aesthetic and the symmetry of all his stuff and I really love to to challenge that like not exactly in his style but kind of his yeah his mindset on how to approach things like I really love to see how I can even tweak the inspiration of or the visions of a few artists together and, and painters, like, I don't know, just like even, um, what's his name? Jason Pug. And just like seeing how, how I could match it with something else. And yeah, I don't know. And then, yeah, color for me is like a huge thing. And even there, like Rodko, I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense if you say the name and then see my stuff, but in a sense, it's just like how they treat their art and, and having learned about them, how they go about it. Like all that kind of helped to form that kind of style, aesthetic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I get that, that quite well. Like it's not about the visual of the, the people that, that you're getting inspired. It's like it's not about the end result, but like... A little bit of, of how to translate the feeling, right? It is it's quite, quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just like having the the essence of it, not necessarily the aesthetic, but getting the 
and the emotion of it. And your graphic design work and your background and everything, how much do you use your AI in your graphic design? Let's say the client comes to you with a campaign idea and wants you to execute it. Like, if the client is not asking for an AI part of the campaign, do you offer it to them? Yeah, so it changed a lot because it, I obviously show myself differently on on social media like I used to do a lot of graphic design whereas there a lot of clients came from to me because of graphic design work now I think I really doubled into that niche it's still a kind of a niche with AI so now it's very 50 50 if not even more AI than graphic design at this point <laughs> um, but yeah in, in terms of graphic design I that's nice I don't push it on my existing clients. Like if they don't ask for it, then I wouldn't um, necessarily mention it because I still am very aware that AI is still pretty terrifying for some people. And, and, and it's hard to, to grasp and it's hard to understand how it actually works, but also there's limits and Sometimes people think like when you say, sure, we could try with AI, that that is that magic button that does everything, which it doesn't. Like it has sometimes even more limitations <laughs> than before, because like, I don't know, you, you just can't say like, I don't know, I'm making anything up, but nail design. Like that was hard a year ago because the hands were just creepy as, as hell. But I had like one client reached out to me and was like hey could we do like images of nail design I was like absolutely not like that's gonna be more work later on in, in photoshop than just going ahead having a photo shoot for those designs than the other way around but yeah I I mean my clients usually see what I'm doing also on the internet and then they are very open to it and when they're not, mm -hmm. then that's totally fine too. Like I always say, like we could try it, but there's always stock sites we can use and let's not waste time if it wouldn't work and or if it just doesn't make sense. So, yeah. That's that's interesting when you said that about also that there is limits, limits right? Because, because I was saying like, you cannot just like, you know, generate a portrait or something and then you put on the magazine yeah. and this. And you do know disclaimer, this image was created with AI or even you sell even to the client yeah. he will, if he doesn't ask, like whatever. It's not, we feel that is not very ethical, right? So we should maybe make, uh, of course, align with the client before or even if the client want to publish in the magazine, maybe. Because um, my thinking was, okay, we need these yeah. disclaimers because yeah. we cannot know anymore, right? What's real, what's not. So you're like waiting the doctor, checking like a real magazine, they still exist. We will talk about them, but yeah, you're checking a real magazine and then like, like this, this image yeah. is real or is AI? We cannot even know anymore on the, on the internet, on our timelines and everything. But then I was thinking like also, so, okay, maybe we will yeah. need a disclaimer there at some point for our videos for sure. But like, but imagine that like Photoshop, right? When Photoshop arise was the same discussion no we, i remember a little bit we don't uh, yeah. we don't like know what what is real anymore like these photographers they will win these competitions and they will use like photoshop like photography competitions are dead media is dead no one knows yeah. it's true anymore and that didn't happen right <laughs> the same way that we yeah. cannot print money and, and stuff like that because you have the penalties yeah. you, okay if you print money you go to jail 20 years i don't know and but what my thinking was like then you have this uh, even like these days, this last decade, uh, you have this heavy treated Photoshop images for models on magazines, on cover of magazines, on health magazines, which we know is super Photoshop, like this perfect skin and everything. And this became synonymous of beauty, even to creating like deeper health crisis, mental crisis with comparisons and like, uh, you know, so, and there was no disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> this image is heavily Photoshopped and it's, it's not real anymore. It's something else, you know, it's something in between. It's a, but it's uh, interesting, the, this deeper discussion, I think, right, about basically, can I really uh, jump on my next question that how you see AI on the mainstream, right? Because this is an easy case, right? use cases on the magazines, on the mainstreams, on the TVs, on the mainstream. Like, 
how do you see how do you see AI being slowly or faster added to this like mainstream uh, media and uh, yeah how, how fast it, do you think this 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 will be and yeah what, what's your thoughts uh, thoughts about it like like classification or ethical yeah. considerations or what what's the I limit I mean at some point maybe? there's probably going to be very very few limits <laughs> um but yeah it's it's hard to predict stuff right like by now oh my god when when did i start i think august 22 with dolly 2 so that's already like i mean this year it's going to be two years that i have kind of dabbled into the ai field and that like yeah beginning of last year was like oh my god ai is gonna become mainstream very quickly and i was very wrong because even now like I, like we are in a bubble like lots of people have no freaking idea yeah. and i always yeah from time to time people do this reality check <laughs> i see on my twitter like yeah. hey i went outside and i asked some people yeah. no one have the fucking clue yeah. idea what's happening like, here and sometimes I say, people and I say, know about ChatGPT, <laughs> but then even mid-journey some people are just like and even in, in my field, like graphic designers I talk to, they have never heard of Midjourney. They have never, or they have heard of it, but never tried it out. And that always gives me the reality check where I'm like, wow, like I don't feel early on, but I guess we are still pretty early and, and very much in a bubble. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of mainstream, I I kind of fear that it is the usual, like also the kind, same kind of thing that you just said, like with Photoshop, it got used for, yeah, maybe not to write cases, um, especially if, if you look like those magazines with beautiful skinny girls with no, no spots in their face, like they, they never have a pimple, they don't have texture in their face, like they're just like a blur of themselves and that's kind of gotten the standard and and if you're a very young person seeing that you you kind of feel like oh my god but i do have pimples like my skin isn't that smooth as that and it's gonna be the same thing with ai like exactly i i, I don't really see a difference between heavy heavily photoshopped images and ai because it's the same it's the same kind of fake like it's not reality um, but yeah, it, it will definitely be used for bad reasons in terms of political stuff, 100%. Like, it's so easy to now create a huge shitstorm with AI. Like, even with, what was it, the Pope Francis with the puffer jacket. Like, I 100, like, when you know it and you see the picture, you, you obviously know it's AI. But, for example, my parents, they, they don't know. Like they don't, they don't dabble in that field. Like they have no idea, and they see that then in the news. And but there's a lot of yeah. memes now that uh, people from Facebook. There's a lot of comments. Uh, plenty of AI generations, but the boomer, boomers on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's such a beautiful and that's house. where I'm kind of no idea, afraid of, right? Like that generation is already like very, like they don't mm. didn't believe in the internet, and now there's AI, and they don't believe in AI, and it's just like, oh my god, <laughs> now. Now it's doomsday every day and yeah. It's a perfect context so, for a rebellion or something. Yeah, I don't know. Also <laughs> like fake, fake news or just like misinformation is going to be huge. Like you really have to check everything double, three times, four times, maybe five times on your own. And you really have to know how to do research to find like what you're actually looking for and then yeah, I think if you're a very naive kind of person and don't question stuff, then the mainstream with mixed with AI will be very harsh on some people. Um, but I don't know how quickly that could, will come. Like, it's always been kind of fake. Like, news are very clickbaity. It's all very just, like, attention-grabbing. So will it really change too much? Maybe not. Maybe yes. <laughs> maybe it's gonna be even worse. But maybe it won't change too much. It's already pretty 
crazy out there. <laughs> but yeah, hard to say. <laughs> no, I, I had the. I thought about terrible scenario now, like I, I want to share with you because I don't want to keep just in my mind because it's terrible. The imagine because we have a spun, like remember I, I was watching some story about how spam was created uh, on, the, on the YouTube, like recently it was kind of by accident <laughs> and they say, oh, we can make some money with this, you know, but like, so we have our spam filters, right? Yeah. So I think in the some near future, maybe some near Black Mirror future where we will still be alive. Uh, that everyone will have their own AI, which will need to filter what is real and what is not. So maybe there will be someone calling you or sending you a message, and then your your spam filter will be your AI spam filter yeah. that will filter what is okay. This is a real call or this is a real message, and this is not. This is like a robot, you know, like yeah. like a spam filter of reality. See, that's why millennials we don't take calls. Like we are already <laughs> like perfectly fine. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in like a year ago, a lot of comments were kind of like, well, now you still lo love using it, but wait until AI takes your job. And I was like, but how amazing would it be if in like two years, there's like an AI that just really takes my job and I can finally live my dream of having a farm and a million income. animals and, and just like, <laughs> oh my God, like honestly... It no, doesn't it, sound I also, <laughs> it, no, it sounds really good when you see yeah. this good possibility, right? The romantic, yeah. like, AI is doing all the boring job, so we have time to be humans. So, exactly. like, go out, like, touch some grass, do picnics, read a book, play have some music, farm. dance, do yoga, traveling, yeah. and AI is doing, of course, if you do some handcraft work, you want to work, of course you can work, but, like, imagine if, if things go right, <laughs> it will be amazing <laughs> that we have just your own, like, your only worries to be human. And yeah. AI is doing the boring work in the same way that, you know, when we go to school, our only mission is go to school and come back and play, yeah. ideally, of course. And your parents is taking account of all the work on the background, but we have no idea. Even yeah. We don't even know what's happening, right? We just see it, but we don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. See, I, I don't hate it. <laughs> like, I don't think as this of like the worst scenario, right? <laughs> I mean, obviously, let's see in two years when that's the case and I don't have a farm and I just sit here in front of my computer having nothing to do. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, with, with everything, like AI will change jobs. I, I still don't believe it will take away jobs in that kind of sense. But yeah, it, it will change. But it will also create new kind of opportunities, which I can already see, like, firsthand. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, I, I also shared this opinion that say I will just will bring good things and allow us to do the good things that we want to do as people, like the personal things, really connect as a human being. But let's see. <laughs> and nowadays, like we're bombarded with new information and new releases almost every day. So, what are your, let's say tactics to avoid burnout? What are your favorite tools that you're exploring? also on, on the AI with all this things in all this gigantic amount of information that is there. I mean I, I try to have a little bit of a focus. Like there's so much AI news and stuff going on. I try to not try out and I have everything like every news up at all times. Like I'm I'm really into the generative art uh, kind of thing like I do keep up with for example if there's like a music kind of thing that's that's kind of cool I look into it but I don't waste too much time on it but then obviously if there's like a new image generator if there's like a new tools for video and everything I try it out but I try to still have like a little bit of a focus and not be like okay I try out and want to know about everything because yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know how, how much it will really help me in any way. Um, but I, I, I do feel like my mental health is not, has not gotten worse. If anything, it's gotten better because like, I, I am way more creative again. And I know it always sounds so stupid and then people who hate AI um, 
always try to make a point that AI is not creative, but I feel like in my process, like I'm way more creative because I, I don't scroll social media like all the time anymore. Like I get way more creative. I love again, like just working in Photoshop and finding new ways there and trying to watch tutorials to learn something new again. Like for example, for Premiere Pro, After Effects, like that was so much fun for me. And and so that, that kind of, it more so helped my mental health than it did worse. <laughs> but of course you have to always give yourself boundaries. Um, of course you can always overdo it. Like for example, for me, when the pandemic hit and TikTok got like huge, that was when my mental health really decreased because like I was scrolling endlessly. And when I saw like they, they have always like those net notifications and when I saw like I was on TikTok 16 hours a week, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> like this has to end. This is not good. This is not healthy. This is really, I don't know, like I don't even know, like that, that's like a part-time job. <laughs> like, how could I have even done this? And so, yeah, I, I, I just chose my, my kind of field where I love being at. And, and I know that it doesn't ruin my mental capacities anymore. And it's, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, th that's so individual, right? Like, I, I don't know if I could tell another person like, hey, instead of Instagram, how about you try out mid-journey? <laughs> like, I would love to be that person. And then let's let's open them, some but... rehab, uh, rehab clinic. So yeah. the methodology is very, <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll change social by, we can be millionaires. No, I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. Great ideas. Uh, no one, if you're listening, don't do that. Wait, wait for us. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. Th thanks for sharing it. Cause I, I haven't thought about it because yeah, for me, for one sign is really overwhelming, uh, but like, like you said, I think the, uh, the key word here is focus, focus on what yes. you like. And for me at the moment, it's like filmmaking, which I also discovered, which has everything I like, like photography, <laughs> like music, yeah. sound design. And, uh, I, like, I was never a professional video editor. I just know how to cut, how yeah. to put fades, how to put texts. That's it. Like, exactly. and then, yeah. uh, like very basic, <laughs> I, I did some like, very basic videos and now with AI, I became this AI filmmaker by accident. So again, I also see, as I said, myself on YouTube all the time, uh, improving techniques, or if I want to do some special effect, or if I want to do something like, for example, I want to shake the image on the scene. I, I don't know how to do, you know, I need to yeah. go for it. I want to do like this typewriter effect. I need to go there and find how to do it. Yeah. So um, um, I also see myself learning a lot again, these new tools, new skills, uh, uh, getting deeper on skills. I was basic like video and yeah. And yeah, like uh, focus is important. I think uh, yeah. maybe this image is video or sound, like or games can be whatever you, you like. Try to, to, to focus on that, right? Yeah. And now, even if they like pull out the plug of AI, there's like no AI tomorrow. Like you still learn something. Like you can now use whatever you learn in traditional ways. Like it's not based on just AI. Like you can now do typewriter for a filmmaker. I don't know. Yeah, and, definitely. And that's so amazing. And yeah, that's why I, I really love to embrace the creativity it kind of brings. Also, like obviously in the generative field, but more so even in the traditional field. And I feel like that can never be overlooked. Like we still need all those traditional tools. They will not go away in... Yeah, we don't want to live in a world where there is no analog photography, right? On the world, yeah. there is no real paintings on the wall and, and stuff yeah. like that. And I think some people, they misunderstand that. That is like black or white. Okay, everything's yeah. generative. Everything is digital. It's the matrix. Blah, blah. And like, no, there is a word in between. Like, we still yeah. have like radio, TV, new, we still have a newspaper. Like, yeah. Look at look at this school. You still like now it's changing with pandemic, right? But like you still yeah. have a guy who go there in the front of thirty people, takes a book and give a lesson and write on yeah. how thousands of years we are doing that, right? Like of course now we have more and more digital, but still, yeah. And I also I I, I never felt I work with creative stuff for fifteen years, uh, music, uh, design, photography mostly, and I never feel so much creative because 
I have this crazy ideas. I can go there and make them yeah. life in five minutes. I, yeah. And then I say, okay, there's an interesting direction here. I, I will invest more time on this project and dig deeper. And then, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, so and it doesn't have to stay yeah. there, right? Like you, you can also just be like, okay, AI is the source of inspiration, but then you go out and shoot it and then, I don't know, film it, photograph, yeah. I don't know, whatever. It's, it's also like an amazing inspiration spark to have sometimes because yeah i mean we all know creative block and sometimes it's good to have like that little creative i don't know little machine as a sparing partner to to help out I don't know. definitely uh, when i was working in agencies uh, like graphic designer or director yeah like you have a brief you have a hey, the clients needing this okay but sometimes just sit in front of the photoshop even like going for yeah. references, right, yeah. like whatever. I think when you are a senior, you start to do that. You look for a reference. Okay, this, <laughs> there's a vibe here that's interesting. And then you go, you create your own stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, and then like, you know, like, like how, how can I say? Now you can just go, like, it's much easier to go beyond the creative block, as you said. Like, uh, I, I remember facing this white screen on Photoshop, this blank screen, and then doing something, no, it's like a paper, like trash, no, yeah. no. And then it's okay, everything I did today sucks, like maybe tomorrow. And then tomorrow, yeah. and sometimes you come with the graphic design layout on your mind. It just basically, yeah. again, the same way you see the photo. So a lot of times I was with the graphic design on my mind. Okay, is this photo, is this vibe, is this typography? This is the layout. I just go there and put on materialize on Photoshop. And I think... Again, we are kind of cutting on this step and uh, in the same way that we are cyborg cyborgs with our phones, you have just delay of three seconds that taking yeah. it and blocking and looking at it. This would just, we will cut, I think, uh, soon this step. But talking about projects, I, I heard that you were making some uh, physical uh, magazine or book kind of with uh, Tatiana Tsiguleva. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. So yeah. Uh, shout out to Tatiana. <laughs> also, we are a big fan of her work and also playing a lot with realities, but also this abstract and colorful uh, prompts that I will never guess or yeah. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> which is really nice. Uh, so can you can you tell a bit more about this uh, book slash magazine? What's the why you decided to create that in the first place? And uh, yeah, anything you want to share any timeline or yeah, do the, the pitch. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to see it. And by the way, I got uh, <laughs> my work selected, uh, which make me really happy. And yeah, just uh, thank, thanks for, for selecting my work. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to see it uh, printed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so are we. <laughs> like it's very much still work in progress. Um, projects always take more time than, than you will obviously envisioned in the first place. Um, but yeah, I, I think I even had like a tweet very, very early on, on like, I don't know what, when I first just like was like, okay, those four images, that's pretty cool. And then I was like, wait, this could actually be like a coffee table book kind of thing. And I never followed through with it. And then I saw her doing a tweet about like, hey, I want to do this. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, let's absolutely do it like if you need any help like I would love to just see how how I could be of any help in there and and yeah I mean didn't think much of it but yeah now we're kind of looking into it a bit more realistically and getting it to print at some time and I honestly can't wait to to see it printed because I it, it always has a different feeling to it like digital is always kind of nice but then having it in your hand is just like, hell yeah, <laughs> we did that. That's cool. Um, and yeah, so far, like all the images we we have and selected are absolutely amazing. And I really can't wait to further work on it and get it out there. But yeah, I I don't think we have like a date set yet. And yeah, I hope there's going to be many, many more. I, I think... The original plan was to have it with four, like every version with like mid journey. That so you need the whole see. team for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for every like new feature, we're going to have a book. I mean, then it's a never ending story. That's going to be like a weekly 
magazine at that point. <laughs> yeah, it should be digital. I will not even yeah. have time to print. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. Can't wait to see it printed too. We'll have to have an edition. Uh, well, talking about collaborations, uh, how, how important it is for you, collaborations with other artists, like how, how much weight you put in your career to it, how much effort you make it to, to make it happen, and which is your favorite collaborations, maybe? Oh, they're no. all my favorite. I don't sure. pick one. <laughs> no, it, it's super fun. I mean, in terms of project, I really love the, the film project because, like, as much as I love to do it myself like I have very little knowledge in, in in video like for me it takes forever to find out how I do this and that effect and after effects for example but sometimes it's in my head and I really want to do it and I take that time but it takes me like two weeks to get it like to look as good as I want it so that's an amazing time to collaborate with people who have that knowledge like it's like in the two Gen 48, 48? Yeah, the two Gen 48 videos um, I did with Karim and Jill. It was amazing. Like, especially if you are bound to a time. Like, we only had that weekend. And just sitting there, like me generating the images, sharing the prompts, seeing how we could tweak it together, and then getting it to runway and <laughs> doing all the videos of those and then giving it to Jill to do the editing like seeing it all come together in the end I don't know it, it just is so cool to to collaborate and I, I think it's very important too because you can always learn from other people like as as great as you are on your own like that's amazing if you're very self-sufficient is that a word yeah I think so and yeah, to to see new tips and tricks with other people and or helping out, being like, okay, well, you generate the images, I do the editing, but I can totally share this and that information with you so you just know for the next time how to maybe even do it yourself if needed or if wanted. And yeah, collaboration goes like both ways and it's always amazing. Like I could really just tell that to everyone who's in any creative fields to collaborate with people it doesn't doesn't even have to be just ai related <laughs> like it always helps to have communication with other people around it especially if you're a freelancer it's it sometimes can be very lonely at home <laughs> with only youtube as your teacher um i mean it's cool it's nice that we have that option now but yeah, sometimes it's cool too. Yeah, have more than that. <laughs> Balance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about now, like, talk about all these tools and how much things are available. Is there something else that that did you miss? Let's say it. Like, is there any AI tool that you wish existed but it doesn't? Film. Oh, well, honestly, Magnific did a huge part in it. <laughs> like, they already fulfilled my dreams like crazy. Um, I bet there's some tedious work I would love to get rid of, but I also don't want to get rid of everything. Like, for example, especially the editing part. Like, I love that. And now it's already gotten so... So easy to have beautiful pictures with Midjourney version six. It's like, ah, it come gets, on. It like, gets it's almost quite, ba quite balanced, right? Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. like, it's almost, sometimes I go to Photoshop as well, but it's such minimal, like, in terms of yeah. shadows and balance, it's really, it's impressive. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't want to get rid of too much of it because I still, I still sometimes struggle with seeing myself in the generations I do. Because like, I don't know, maybe it's just a mindset, but I, I just wrote basically the words and then and, and there's an image, but I still want to get myself in there. So I want to go to Photoshop and take it to the next kind of stage, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's what brings me joy. And yeah, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's for sure something, 
some AI tool I would need and want, but I can't think of anything right now. One AI tool maybe, to do magazine, maybe magazines. Maybe for UI design, like icons <laughs> or anything. But I mean, there's already like mm -hmm. millions of libraries who have amazing icon design. So I've already but I hope pretty Figma lazy will there. get there soon because I use a lot already. Like you manage, you just go, you're doing some UI. <laughs> hey, create an icon pack of six icons, one for connectivity, one for uh, and then poof, like yeah. uniform, same stroke, you know, like yeah. this package. I mean, the time, stroke but... thing is still a struggle, right? Like, I mean, Illustrator yeah. has now the, the general, I don't even know what it's called. Um, basically, Flyify, Firefly for vectors yeah. in there. But it's not with strokes, I think. So that would still be pretty cool. And very needed. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but you know, I think yeah, UI is mostly patterns. There is already some tools I was testing like to prompt UI and it's quite okay uh, if you yeah. think that is the best or is the worst that we're going to get yeah. what we already <laughs> have. It, like, it tends to get better. I like, prompt some pages, some, st some simple stuff. It was quite, was quite interesting, but I think yeah. still. But uh, UI is patterns, right? Like if you see a product detail page, if you see like a menu page, if you see a like, profile page, it's kind of pattern. I think yeah. it's easy kind of to generate, but the UX is what happens between one screen and the other. Why you're, and I think this will be much harder to to automate the, That's the true. UX part than the the UI part. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we are approaching the, the end of our conversation. We have two more questions for you and our final quote. Um, so, which, which advice would you give to a graphic designer or even visual designer, whatever designer, uh, that it's seeing what's happening on the AI landscape, it's curious to try like maybe to pivot or even to just start to use on which advice you would do for some designer which want to start to play or use AI? To not be afraid of it. Like I, what I mostly hear from people who don't use it is that they say that they're afraid of it, that it's, I, I, I don't know in, in, like I never really ask like in, in what way kind of why they're so afraid of it, but I, I'm guessing because like it's taking my job kind of way, but it's such like, it's just like an extension to yourself. Like I never see AI as the, as the art director, you're still the art director and, and AI is merely like your intern and, and that's how you have to use it. Right. Like, if, yeah, the, the advice would really just be like to not be afraid and trying it out. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Like I also at some point tried myself in 3D and I was so bad at it. And I was just like, oh my God, it's just like not for me. And I, I at least tried it. Like I was like, I'm, okay, I'm well. bad on it for like 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, trying it out and seeing where, where I could use it or definitely how I won't use it like that's good to know right like but never trying it and then it's kind of like the people who said like the internet's going away um and now we're here <laughs> and I I think it's the same with AI like it it won't go away and will definitely evolve into something and into our tools and it already is like if you use Adobe programs AI is in there and yeah, I mean, just trying it out is definitely not the worst thing to do. And you don't have to love it, right? Like, and if it's for ethical reasons, then that's totally fine too, to not use it, right? Like, whatever the reason is, that's all right. But it probably won't change that it will be there and it won't go away. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually actually say like the last thing I said, like, even if you're afraid, still try it out. And and even if you realize like this is a cool asset to have, or if you realize it's not a cool asset to have in your toolbox, you tried it out. And I don't know, it's it's always fun to try out new things and, and just like have a broader horizon for your work field and, and having a new little tool in your toolbox is definitely a good thing to have but yeah just trying it out seeing where it takes you and 
be the creator of yourself. Like just let AI help you <laughs> be some sort of guide, but not not a teacher. So yeah. <laughs> so some wise words. So we, <laughs> yeah, just uh, quickly like, uh, say thank you uh, for your time availability. We know life is, is busy. <laughs> we are all busy too. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I post on Twitter like publicly <laughs> the invite, and you you answer right away. Uh, so uh, I even asked Tatiana, hey, Tatiana, maybe you can help me bring her. And and then I looked, you already replied. Okay, I don't need it. She already replied. So, I will write her. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for for your time. It was like uh, thank a nice you for having me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we always finish with one quote to maybe when we press stop, let people thinking about it. It like reverberates. So Mauricio, it's it's your turn. To, to let us with quotes and and that's it for today. It was an immense pleasure to have this talk with you, Judy. Thanks so much for some nice insights over your process, over your influences and everything, and just your opinion, which is already super incredible. Um, yeah, so the quote for today is from Audrey Lord. And it says, creativity is the language we use to communicate the urgency of our dreams for a better future. <laughs>